There are many risk factors for developing cancer, including age, family history, viruses and bacteria, of course our lifestyles, as well as contact with harmful substances. More than 50,000 chemicals are in commerce today and hundreds of new chemicals are being introduced each year. These chemicals are found in everyday items such as foods, personal care products, packaging, prescription drugs, and household and lawn care products. Cancer risk in chemicals such as pesticides have been a focus of considerable research in the last few years. Now concern is growing about non-pesticides and synthetic chemicals. An early link between cancer and a chemical was found in the late 1700s when an English physician noted that a large number of chimney sweeps had cancer of the scrotum due to exposure to soot, which contains chemicals known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAH. Since then, many more chemicals have been identified as known or suspected causes of cancer, and we've learned that exposure to some chemicals and hazardous substances can increase the risk of cancer. Exposure may occur through ingestion of contaminated food and water, inhalation of polluted air, and absorption through our skin. Exposure to chemicals in the outdoors, at home, and at work may add to the risk of getting cancer. In fact, much of what we know about chemicals causing cancer in humans, we've actually learned from workers exposed at their jobs, like those chimney sweeps, along with farm, medical, textile, and transportation workers. We know that certain chemicals, including asbestos, nickel, cadmium, radon, vinyl chloride, benzidine, and benzene, are known human carcinogens, meaning that they have been found to cause cancer in humans. These carcinogens may act alone or with another carcinogen to increase our risk. For example, asbestos workers who also smoke have a higher risk of lung cancer. A person's risk of developing cancer depends on a number of factors. How much, how long, how often, and when they are exposed to these chemicals. So a number of factors which helps explain the complexity of the disease. Now when you're exposed is also important because a small exposure in the womb, for example, may be far more serious than a small exposure as an adult. The genes that you inherit from your parents also play a role. Many chemicals can be stored in the body's tissues for long periods of time, and the long-term effect of most of them is unknown. Even DDT, which was banned in the 1970s, continues to be detected in the environment and our food supply, breast milk, and fat tissue of animals and humans. And there may be a long period of time between chemical exposure and a cancer diagnosis. So let's take a closer look at a type of cancer that affects millions of families worldwide, breast cancer. Breast cancer occurs in every country of the world in women at any age after puberty with increasing rates later in life. Over the past 30 years, breast cancer rates have increased by nearly 20% in the U.S. and we've seen declines in recent years, which is fantastic news. Even so, according to the World Health Organization, during 2020, there were 2.3 million women diagnosed with breast cancer and 685,000 deaths globally. Breast cancer may be associated with chemicals that include bisphenol A or BPA, which can be found in plastic products, PAH found in vehicle exhaust and air pollution, parabens used in preservatives and personal care products, PCBs found in plastics and many household products, and dioxins, which are formed by the burning of chlorinated compounds like PVC and PCBs, as well as the combustion of diesel fuel. Now, as with other cancers, the timing of exposure to this array of harmful chemicals affects our breast cancer risk. The development of the breast begins in the womb and continues after birth through puberty. Some studies suggest developing breasts are more susceptible to damage, so early life exposure to some chemicals may affect breast cancer risk later in life. Today, there are things everyone can do to help prevent cancer, a healthy diet, exercise, getting those annual wellness checks from your doctor and the recommended screenings, avoiding tobacco and alcohol. And there's one more that we can add to the list, avoiding exposure to harmful chemicals whenever we can, especially for pregnant women, babies, and children. 
This is a, a more holistic approach to help reduce your risks of developing cancer and to empower each of us to take better control of our health.